Storm is here. We're going to have a good, good day. It's going to be a positive day. And the next time she comes, she's going to be over there at the piano, and she's going to sing an original song. Welcome back. Yes, thank you, Miss Sherry. So it's good, good to, to be see here. you. I thank am you. so glad spring has sprung. Yes. Now, there's no excuse to say you can't go to Awake America <laughs> meetings because of the weather and That's the cold. Right. We'll probably still have one more cold snap. Yes, Maybe. probably. But that's okay. That's it's okay. It's going to be down to 29, I think, the next few days sometime. That's okay. It's going to be up to 77 Thursday. <laughs> so go figure. Welcome to, to not, Georgia. Yeah, yeah exactly. You wear North your snow Georgia. boots in the morning, then you wear your flip-flops in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So yay. Let's talk about how many years you have been doing Awake America prayer meetings who have grown and gone to so many places now. Okay, well, in 2009, we started it there at the uh, old courthouse steps in Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. And so September the 11th till now. So in September, it'll be 15 years. That's crazy. It is. It has That's gone crazy. by so fast. Yeah. And so much has transpired in those 14 and a half years or whatever. And God has been good to us to let us open 13 locations, of which 10 right now are currently open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just opened one in Pickens County last Thursday. That's exciting. <laughs> yes, that's very exciting. At the library? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Stephanie Harridan, she and her husband, Pastor Rusty, uh, minister over at World Harvest Calhoun. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to start it. And she did it in one week. That's You're cool. talking about a suddenly. I was yeah. like, well, uh, uh, you need to do a PSA. You need to, I need to get you on this. And I need. And she's like, well, let's just go ahead. So yeah. okay. here we go. Okay. And it was wonderful. You know what? I didn't even share this with you when, when you told me it was at the library. I went to the library about a year, year and a half ago to research something that I was hoping might be at the library. And it mm -hmm. wasn't. And they kept saying, well, we've moved and we've done this and we've done that. Well, somebody sent me a picture of a marble bench out in the courtyard at the library in memory of my mother, and it has my mother's name on it. Really? So I went by to see it, mm -hmm. and I said, I went inside and I said, listen, somebody told me about this bench that somebody didn't honor my mama. Can you pressure wash it? Because you can barely read her name. And they got tickled and they said, uh, we'll see if we can do that because all the benches in the park looked dismal. Yeah. And I said, make this a welcoming, warm, welcoming place because yes. it's beautiful. Yes. But all those little marble benches needed to be pressure washed. I hope that they've been pressure washed. But it was so sweet because the library is so conveniently located. That's yes, a great place for a prayer meeting. Absolutely. And yeah. it's been newly renovated and so it was just I, I was like, wow. And lots of parking. Because we're usually in the park or, yeah. you know, somewhere where the roosters have been crowing and, and over here underneath the house in the, in the basement and, yeah. you know, or uh, and a lot of city halls and things, uh, uh, courthouses, but this is new. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is good, Lord. That's Thank good. you for opening this one up. <laughs> That's right. And it, it, it really does have parking that you don't have oh, yes. to fight for parking yes. because if court's in session in town, you can't find a parking place really? for three blocks, you know. So. so the Lord led her there. I mean, it was <coughs> just awesome. awesome. She tried the courthouse and city hall and different things, talked to different people. but um, And this is a huge meeting room that they mm -hmm. have with lots of tables and chairs. It worked out perfect. I put yeah. it on Facebook yeah. on my wall so anybody wants to go look at it. That's they can awesome. see the images of it and some mm -hmm. videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, Voices of Hope Fire Choir is always there on yeah. the opening of all yeah. of them, and they support us and have since day one, yeah. singing the good news. Well, speaking of singing the good news, this weekend, one of the most famous, popular, loved families in the Canton area and the Jasper area lost two family members. Mm -hmm. Jean Tatum passed away one day who, who sang one of my favorite songs, some call it heaven, some call it home. Mm -hmm. He introduced me to that 30 some odd years ago. And then uh, his sister, Martha Gibson, who sang far away for my husband's funeral, for my mom's funeral, and made a CD for me with Linda Autry playing the piano and Martha Gibson singing, Martha went to be with the Lord. So you mm -hmm. talk about folks leaving us. Yeah. So many folks have left us, but you know what? They've gone to a better place. Amen to that. They've gone to a better place. And yeah. I said today, Heaven's Choir is two times <laughs> better than it was because there's two amazing people. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind because Martha, she stepped on stage in Jasper, Georgia at the United Methodist Church. We had a big concert to raise money for Hans Rufert. 
And I had asked Martha, I said, could you please come and do Far Away? And everybody just identifies that song with her, even though Peg McKamey did it first. And it was Peg's song, and it was just that song that touches everybody's heart. But Martha went to be with the Lord, and that is just so weird to me because she's always been there for everybody else's funeral. And now she's gone. So, yeah, but yeah. you know what? It, it was just even coming to me recently that, you know, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, there's the judgment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We only have a certain amount of time here. Yep. And if we don't know the Lord, it's not going to be good. But if we yep. know Him, there's our promise yes. that we have the redemption through the blood of Jesus that we can go meet Him face to face mm -hmm. and just. Yeah. Bask in that yeah, forever yeah, 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 <laughs> with our yeah. loved ones and, and yeah. the apostles and all the people in the Bible that we've read about through yep. the years and the yep. stories. I can't imagine getting to meet Moses or Elijah or somebody, <laughs> or Ruth, you know, or yeah, Esther. Yeah. Oh my. I'd yeah. like to we meet Mary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. one of my favorites yeah. that yeah. carried the gospel in her mm -hmm. womb. That was just good. So That's yeah, amazing. It, yes, it is amazing. We, we can't even imagine how mm -hmm. good it's going to be. But we have a glimpse of it in our hearts because Jesus has given that love mm -hmm. that we're going to feel when we get to see him face to face <clears throat> for the first oh time. Oh, my. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. You know, do, do you ever think about what's he going to look like? Yes. Will you recognize him? Oh, I will. Will you know him? Yeah, because yeah. it says in uh, the little Johns, one, two, and three in the back, it says that we'll know him as he is. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we know him in our heart. Right. But when we see him, we yeah. will know him as he is. Yeah. Because we're going to be like him. Yeah. And when he sees us, it's just going to boom, that connection. Wow. I can't wait. And, and you know, we've heard, we, well, it's in the Bible, but I've heard different stories of people who have gone to heaven and come back and said that they saw Jesus mm -hmm. and his eyes just pierce you with love, nothing but love. Wow. Because that's what sent him to the cross. Mm -hmm. They may mm -hmm. have thought they mm -hmm. killed him, but no, it was God's yeah. redemptive plan for us that he did it because he loved us so much that he was willing to do that. I, you know, Pastor, when people paint a picture of Jesus on the cross, they show it with a little bit of blood here and there. But he said, <laughs> oh, my gosh, his entrails were hanging out. Mm -hmm. He was marred so bad they could not recognize him. Mm -hmm. That's what he went through for each mm -hmm. one of us to receive for free. Yeah. For yeah. free. We don't have to do any works for it. All we have to do is receive his love mm -hmm. and his forgiveness. And that's what it's all about. That's it, it is. That's, That's why it. we were sent here, Sherry. Yeah. Yep. And to help those along yep. the way that need yep. it, you know. You know, when we talk about that empty tomb, um, I, I was listening the other day. I was talking to somebody, and I said, have you ever heard the song Four Days Late by Karen Peck? And she said, no. And I said, really? And so I played it for her, and she said, oh, my gosh. She said, let me save that. I want to share it with my husband. And I said, if you've ever been to Fields of the Wood mm -hmm. and you've stood there, mm -hmm. even though it's not the real tomb, you really do understand that from that, mm -hmm. that stone was rolled away. <laughs> I think yes, there's a song or two about that stone <laughs> being rolled away, you know. Uh -huh. And and we're just like, this is real. This this is real. And we have the evidence and we have the truth to back it up. Mm -hmm. When you run into somebody who says, I don't believe in God, and I've I've met so many atheists lately, mm. and I'm like, wow, wow. You know what? I come back with that. Well, one of the things I is, can't imagine because can I just deny, go, wow. How can you deny God's existence because you would be denying your own existence because He created you? Mm -hmm. And tell them that. I don't care. If, atheist is just yeah. a label. Yeah. Tell them that He created you in His image. How can you deny your own self? He fearfully and wonderfully made you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make it all about what he did for them and let them, you know, wow, no one's yeah. ever told me the good news of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he sent his son, his only begotten son, for our sins so that we right. could live with him forever. He created us to, for the, well, there's a ministry of reconciliation that he gave to all of us here in this earth that call him Lord. And when we use that ministry of reconciliation, it brings the sinner back to him. Mm -hmm. That's what the good news of the gospel is to reconcile the sinner back to the Father through Jesus Christ's sacrifice and blood at Calvary. That's the good news That's that good an news. atheist or a Muslim, anybody that does not believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that is it. That's it mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. To let them know how much he loves them yep. and yep. love them enough to, to do that for them. You know, one of the things that I'm going to have to talk to him about when I get there, <laughs> forgiveness. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> A beautiful, beautiful young lady, Lake and Riley, was brutally mm -hmm. murdered. Yes. 
Do you know that the Lord will even forgive her killer? Yes, I do know that. He, he did it to Saul. Yes. He said yes. he killed all those Christians in the Bible. Yeah. And, and Jesus struck him down and says, why are you persecuting me? He said, what are you talking about? He said, quit killing my people. That's yeah. me you're, you're killing. Mm -hmm. You're persecuting my people. And he turned him when he went blind. You know, it took three days at, at Ananias' house. And he finally got the, it clicked with him. And he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Yes, I do know that God will save yeah. the vilest sinner. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what's so weird. That's and what's so weird. Jesus said, he told his disciples, pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pray for those who revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely mm -hmm. for my name's sake, because great is your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we could ever in America get that revelation, then we will look at people through God's eyes. Mm -hmm. We'll be persecuted for it. But you know what? I can't devalue the cross because he did it for me. Right. That's what it's all about. The value of the blood of an innocent lamb. Mm -hmm. He didn't he did not do one thing to deserve any of that. Nope. He always prayed for those who hated him. And he looked at the man right there at uh, it was Pi I think it was Pilate or one of those I think Caiaphas or Pilate. He's, he struck him on the face this soldier did and he said, "Why do you hate me?" He doesn't even know you. He didn't even know him. He said, "No man could take my life. My father has the power." Mm -hmm. to save me or bring me home mm -hmm. or do this, but this is his will, mm -hmm. and I'm going to mm -hmm. carry it out today. Mm -hmm. Watching The Passion of the Christ took me about three years to finally watch it because I knew everybody kept saying, it's really rough, it's really rough. Mm -hmm. And what you just described is ten times worse than mm -hmm. how they depicted this in the yes. movie. Yes. So if you think that we were affected by the movie Passion of the Christ, imagine the day as his mother... And, and those who loved him stood there and watched that. Yes. Imagine that. Yes. I mean, if your kid cuts its finger, you cringe. Mm -hmm. You cringe. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you saw that. I can't even imagine Imagine that. I don't have yeah. any biological children, but I got great nieces and nephews all over the place. And uh, I love every one of them. And yeah, to see them in pain now, mm -hmm. you know, and then imagine what God went through with his son. Yeah. Having to turn his back on him yeah. for the first time. He'd ever been separated from his father's love was on that cross. Wow. Well, today we <laughs> want to share some beautiful photos of God's amazing work. Mm -hmm. And God's amazing work includes Zanna Jordan, who was <laughs> named after a part of the Bible. And she is an amazing little miracle. And then Evelyn's little nephew is in one of these photos, too. And then the beautiful blue skies and the spring flowers. Look at that. Now, Aww. they are almost the same exact age. And is that not just precious? And I said, you know, we sell a lot of real estate. And we stay busy, 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 and we are both workaholics. But we take time for those precious miracles of God. And look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> And uh, Miss Miss Zanna is, and and we salute all women today because Friday was uh, International Women's Day. If you're a woman mm -hmm. and you feel, you know, I can do anything. I'm empowered. You know why you're empowered? Because of God's love. Yes. You know, anything that you think you can't do, I bet you can if mm -hmm. you just ask for a little bit of help. I had a failure last week, and it really took me down, and I cried a lot, and I got really emotional about it. And then I said, oh, and I love this one. I love that. Somebody shared that the other night. And I said, yeah, that's pretty awesome. But <clears throat> we all have the ability to um, look at his work. We see it every day. I saw the blue skies yesterday. I love when everything starts blooming. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't breathe today because everything <laughs> is blooming. But I love when it blooms. <clears throat> I was out taking pictures of camellias, and then somebody brought me a box of iris. And when he told me, oh, and that's my favorite thing, y'all. I paid six eighty eight for my Cheerios, and then I walk in the dollar store, and they have different cereals, four for eight dollars. Guess what? Cheerios wasn't included. So I bought a bunch of uh, Frosted Flakes and things like that on sale. So there are some sale items going on. And you don't have to pay six eighty eight. You don't have to get hung up on my crazy Cheerios I'm hung up on. So, <laughs> but I love that. Me and the Dollar General go round and round about those coupons. And now this was the view on Saturday evening after the, you know, we had a miserable, dreary, dreary day. 
and then the the sun came out but isn't that beautiful to see the blue skies and the clouds and those beautiful mountains and this is preserving the past and embracing the future this is downtown ball ground at the park going by the nice beautiful homes at malone's pond and that is mules and the I love that. I love that people can still get out and do that. This guy comes through town about every week and brings his uh, family and they ride around and have a really good time. And again, we salute the city of Bile Ground. They have done an amazing job. Have you ever seen that stuff? It's not mulch, it's tire, shredded tires. Yeah. Yes, okay. And they did that so um, it doesn't, the water doesn't sit there and get murky. Yes, and there's your it's, plane. It's just doing really, really well. So they oh. did that for Calvin Farmer Park. And, I love that spring is here. There's going to be a huge Easter egg hunt there from the Baptist Church. They're going to have a big, big Easter egg hunt there on uh, March the 30th, and we want to invite everybody to come down to that, and again, at Calvin Farmer Park. You will have fun, and it will cost you zero, and your children will be giggling and laughing and carrying out, and look at those yellow flowers. Look at those blue skies. How can you deny him? How can you deny that? Waking up Sunday to those skies, I was so excited. I was so happy. And those magnolia trees have been transplanted and saved and preserved because the developer is, is, he loves trees, he loves keeping everything protected. So he actually moved those huge, huge magnolia trees. And that is our first sign of spring, or those little yellow jonquils. Everybody loves them. Mm -hmm. Everybody has them. And if you see me on the side of the road digging some up, yes, I probably will be. <laughs> yes, I probably will be because I love them. I love them, and uh, those blue skies, just look how, how can we deny his work? How can we deny his work? Okay, now guys, everybody, if you have an old ranch home and you're so sick of looking at it the way it is and you want to change it, this is a house that has been completely redone, and a, a dad and son did this, and I love that they opened that up because it has a beautiful view on the end of the house. I would never have thought of that. And I love the new ceilings that they put in. I think that's really cool to take down that stuff. Um, and and it, look at that, how, how simple and how elegant. And they did the whole thing for about $50,000. So if you're looking at remodeling a home and you have an opportunity to buy an old ranch home that needs a lot of work, then look at what can happen. And this happened, it, it took them a few months to do it. But again, it was about a $50,000 budget, and it's one of those things when you walk in it, you cannot imagine that this was an old, depressed, needed a bunch of work house, and now look at it. Isn't that amazing? And they, they took down the popcorn ceilings. Everybody is like, oh my gosh. That, and it, it's, a, it's a hassle to get it down, but it's really neat to see it gone. We want to remind you, too, that the uh, FFA sale is going to be happening on March the 23rd, I believe. Is that right? And then the uh, ball ground plant sale is going to be happening on May the 11th. And, and the city of ball ground has something happening all the time. On April the 6th, we have a barbecue and brews festival. And we're going to have some great music for that. And on the 11th, we do have the ball ground Botanical Garden. This is their fundraiser. Every every year they do a fundraiser. You can buy all kinds of plants and they're really good prices and it's a good way to give back to the Botanical Garden who offers you a free beautiful garden to visit every single day of the year for not a penny. You just come and sit and relax if you want to have a picnic there, if you want to have your prom pictures made there, if you want to do your wedding pictures there. You can do it at the Botanical Garden and there's about nine months out of the year, there's something blooming. It's just absolutely beautiful. And again, it's compliments of the Ball Ground Garden Club and the city of Ball Ground. So now you, I introduced you to some gentlemen from Ball Ground who do a prayer service. Yes. Mike Smith and yes. uh, Daryl. And I hope that we can get them and you together because wouldn't that be neat? Yes, it would. I it talked for them on the phone. Mm -hmm. I sent him a text telling me that you'd give me information and he was excited to know that we were coming in, and mm -hmm. of course he had knee surgery on Tuesday, so he couldn't come. Yeah. But yeah. he said he was going to share it with all of his buddies that pray. I think he said he has a group of 15 men. Right. That pray every Tuesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they thank do. You, Lord. Yes, they do. So and, and, yeah, yeah, if we all can just get together, man, would that be a powerful time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. would Looking be. Looking forward indeed. to seeing them. Yeah, yeah. 
good guys. And did I tell you the story about why he wrote his book about when God shows up? I because his remember. his young son was diagnosed with cancer, and God showed up. Yeah. And his young son is now forty something. Yeah. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah, God showed up. <laughs> and that's why when people look at you and go, "Well, how do you know? Why, why would you have been put through all this if God was real? <laughs> why would you? Well, I wouldn't be here if God wasn't real because I would have been aborted in 1951. Really? Wow. So. Okay. There's a lot of people like you yeah, that if, have made a huge impact yeah, on if life. If God wasn't real. James Robinson, Betty and James, he's, a, he's one of them. Mm -hmm. He survived abortion. Yeah. There's yeah. other friends yeah. of mine that have uh, survived abortion. And yeah. now they work with the Wake America prayer meetings and helping people yeah. to come off drugs. There's all kinds of things that God is doing through people who almost mm -hmm. was aborted. Didn't exist. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and we see his miracles every single day. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then sometimes you see something like a, a, a child fight cancer for many, many years and then he loses that battle. Well, he made it 17 years longer than they thought he'd make it. Right. So um, here's what people need to take into an account. And um, I don't know if they've ever been told this, but this is the truth. There's facts and then there's the truth. The mm -hmm. truth is we live in a fallen world mm -hmm. because of Adam and Eve. Okay, so they chose to sin, and we fought. We came into sin. We're born into sin and iniquity. Our mother had us, or whatever. But the good news is that we can turn to the gospel of Christ to bring us out of that old sin nature and become a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. The Bible does say that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Mm -hmm. That's in mm -hmm. Psalms. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's good news for us who mm -hmm. are in this battle. Because mm -hmm. see, we're in a war between good and evil. And God sent us into the world to bring good news into this dark uh, world that's depraved because of sin. Mm -hmm. He knew it when he sent us here on our missions. But we live our life according to what he says. Then it fulfills our destiny. And it brings other people out of that darkness into his marvelous light. Just like mm -hmm. the disciples. Mm -hmm. You know, he sent them out to go give the good news and they did even the one that denied him three times he had a revival there mm -hmm. <laughs> i think it was five thousand that was saved in one day in, in the <laughs> book of acts so when you Crazy. when you go through things in your life listen my family's been through their fair share of things even my brother asa which is now our pastor he mm -hmm. is a miracle mm -hmm. he was born into this world with a waterhead and he was a twin uh, one of a different set of twins ada and asa and uh, the doctors told my mom just give up on him. And she said, no, I love him. He's mine. And she fought for his life wow. through prayer. And she said, I'll not give up on him. And so she prayed with over him, he, she and dad. But let me tell you, there was a fight. Oh, was there ever a fight for this child? He didn't stand alone until he was 16 months and didn't take his first step to two. 22 mm. months, I think. Mm. Of course, he had a little twin named Ada that helped him all the time do mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And so, see, God had a plan. But yeah. see, the enemy tried to stop that plan. And now he has a worldwide ministry, internet. I mean, the, the list goes on in a church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the side of a road that used mm -hmm. to not be there. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but see, a mother's prayers yep. and yep. intercession around things like us mm -hmm. that help to bring community together and to pray for one another and, and help one another. That's the miracles of, um, and it makes it worth it. Let oh, me yeah. tell you, pastors go through a lot. Oh yeah. They're on the front lines and they are made fun of. They are put down. They are ostracized. Their families are uh, ridiculed for the gospel, but mm -hmm. it's good because mm -hmm. that makes us stronger in him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that saying? There are three things you can't trust, a preacher, a plumber, <laughs> and a politician. <laughs> Those, and, and so all three of those, you can't do without a plumber because you can't flush your toilet without him when it don't work. Can't do without a preacher because you really need to be led and taught. And politician, we'll just leave that on the floor today. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when we think about truly um, our pastor from uh, First Baptist retired about a year ago, and, and there's a new pastor now. And, and it was very weird to me because... Our pastor worked a full-time job and was a pastor mm. and had kids growing up. And, and he just needed a break. You know, he just needed a break. And you could see it in his face. They come to work tired some days because they are working lots and lots of hours. Yes, they are. And only their wives know. Oh, yes, <laughs> or their exactly. their husbands if it's a woman preacher. Yeah. Um, because they carry 
their flock in their mm -hmm. heart. Absolutely. If they're a real pastor, if they have mm -hmm. the heart of the Father, they war over their people, they visit them in the hospital, they set up with them and, and do a lot of things that goes way beyond the family and the mm -hmm. four walls of the mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. And a true minister will do that. They will go the extra mile. And I've met so many wonderful pastors and preachers and, and people who are in the church that work through ministry mm -hmm. in my life that have gone way beyond the call mm -hmm. to let people know that God lo really loves them because they're hurting so bad. Right. You know, some of them are at the point of suicide, some at the point of just uh, throwing in the towel and giving up on life or mm -hmm. their family, mm -hmm. walking out on their family, walking out on a job. And, and people like the pastors and those who are called, um, that answer the call, there's a difference. <laughs> they pay a price. They mm -hmm. pay a huge price and mm -hmm. we should always pray for our pastors mm -hmm. and our church leaders because elders, deacons, whatever, Sunday school teachers, they're all carrying a cross mm -hmm. because Jesus gave them that cross. He said, deny yourself daily. Mm -hmm. Pick up that cross and follow after me. And, and you know, they have to crucify that flesh every day. Like every Paul. Day. Every day he said, I die to my flesh. I die <laughs> every day. And so when you do that for the cause of Christ, there's great reward when you get to heaven mm -hmm. and, and you see Jesus say, good job, come on in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, good and faithful servant, come on in, enter into the joys of the Lord, yep. welcome home. That's gonna be worth it. You know, when we think about if, if we lose a family member, if, if we lose a loved one, it's hard. But if you're a pastor and you lose four members of your church in a week, or even two members, or one member, mm -hmm. you take that home with you, you mm -hmm. know, and it, it's not just, you know, and, and imagine a visitation at the funeral home on Sunday, on Wednesday, on Friday, you're like, wow, wow, mm -hmm. you you rejoice that you know that they were saved and they're mm -hmm. gonna go to be with the Lord, but it's like, oh man, you, you know, the family's the gonna family. be hurting, yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's part of it. Now, mm -hmm. we don't talk much about what happened with Debbie. Pastor Asa could not have been Pastor Asa <laughs> had it not been for Precious Debbie. That's right. And Precious Debbie was, every time she'd walk in, I would giggle because she always wore the coolest <laughs> clothes. And she she dressed so hip and so cool. Yes, and she, she was she was an amazing, amazing woman. Mm -hmm. And from her faith, you know, together they built an amazing membership of people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Around and, the world. And too. truly, she brought <laughs> she brought the beautiful lady. Um, I'm trying to think of her name now. Dr. Juliet from Nigeria. Yeah, from Nigeria. Yes. I get messages from her all the time. Do you really? Yes, and I send her back stuff. Yes. And yeah, and and you know, I remember the day Debbie said, "Do you mind if we bring a guest?" No, okay. And it was you know somebody from Nigeria <laughs> comes in, and I'm like, okay, she traveled a long way to get here. So. Mm -hmm. But how amazing that yeah. she, together, they built the love of so many people, so mm -hmm. many people. Because they were one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They, they loved each other so much. They were very inseparable. Mm -hmm. And it, to each one, they were their worlds. Uh -huh. And um, when that ended, it was very hard on all of us. It's been a sh only a sh what, short four years. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it's been See, sweet. when you say four years, it seems like yesterday to me. Mm -hmm. I remember walking into the funeral home. Yeah. I can remember every minute of it, what she had on, the flowers, the smell, and it did not seem real to me because she was younger than me, she was healthy, she was happy. Mm -hmm. I will always believe that she was the beginning of the COVID crisis. Well, I asked about that and it was not COVID related. Really? Wow, yeah. wow. It was something else. but. God in his infinite mercy takes us when he knows that we're ready to come home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She was in severe pain most of the time. Wow. Lost a lot of sleep in a lot of years. People mm -hmm. don't know what the backside of being a pastor's wife is. Mm -hmm. And But the good thing is that she was always compliant with what God wanted. She said, you either like me mm -hmm. or you hate me. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> she said there's no middle ground with her. Yeah. She was all in for the Lord. And she didn't say much, but when she said it, you knew it meant something, mm -hmm. and it was from the Lord. And she was my, uh, not only my my mentor, but my best friend, really, for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. We knew her for 36 years in our family. And we worked together, the two of us, with everything with World mm -hmm. Harvest Church North uh, at that time. And um, I leaned on her a lot for a lot of wisdom because she had it because God had put it in her heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you talking about a warrior, I'm gonna start crying. 
that woman went through some battles and nobody else should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But she's went on to her reward, and she the good news is she we're going to join her. <laughs> she has. We she get has. to see her. We get to she see has. all of our loved ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, th I think about her all the time, and, and oh. every time you are coming here, I think that often she walked in the door with you, and it just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very strange to, to see that absence of her, but absence yeah. from here is present with him. So, yeah. You know, well, she we didn't leave us hopeless. She, she mm -hmm. uh, helped to bring <laughs> Stephen, her oldest son, he and his wife Dana now have a baby named Petra Elaine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is her was her middle name. Pe Elaine was. Uh -huh. So now we have that joy in our family, and of course, Asa loves her to pieces. You know, mm -hmm. I can imagine. Grandpa, yeah. And so, yeah. see, God always sends somebody back in mm -hmm. when one's taken. Mm -hmm. he, he's he's done it throughout yeah. our whole family's yeah. history. Yeah. Well, I look at that with Zanna because yes, you know. That that was a miracle baby, <laughs> and, yes. and 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 there was a big chance that she wouldn't have been here. And but Ansley was a miracle baby because you know you know the story. Dawn died on the table. They gave her 11 units of blood. Our pastor was standing there saying she's gone, and I'm you know. And then they bring my child back, and then her child from that birth survives, and I'm like. Oh, so I've seen mm -hmm. one, two, three, three miracles of my yes. children now. Exactly. I'm like, that is so weird to me. That's what mom me. said that the Lord told her yeah. that Asa was a miracle and yeah. everything that he'd ever do would be a miracle because he was a miracle. So, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. zanna has got a great future. Zanna, <laughs> Zanna will probably be one of the politicians that you'll like because Zanna gets things done. So. She's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. So and and the first time she met you, she just held yes, and loved you. She and, did. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah, it was She's awesome. We're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to come back with a song from Mr. Ella J. And it's got to be a mm. really good, thoughtful religious song about mamas. We did mama's prayer last week. Let's see if we can find another one. We'll be back shortly. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I'm grown up, grown up, grown up and everywhere and every way. Care and take care of you. You're my grown up and I know you're there. I'm your grown up and you know I care. Because it's you and me and me and, me and, me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck Whether you're swimming in the sea Or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece or just making memories 
writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge.
our viewers know the story about that song. It was actually written, um, if you know Dwight Sanford, you know he's kind of crazy, he's kind of wild, he's, he's a musical guy, but he was mama's boy, and he wrote that song the day of his mother's funeral. Can you imagine doing that? When you think about it, just he said it just came to him. And he opens it with the first four chords that she taught him on the guitar. Mm -hmm. We look back at our lives and we are who we are because of our mom, our dad, our grandparents. Now, your grandparents lived up in the Mineral Bluff area. My grandparents lived over in Dawson County. This painting was done by my mama and it reminds her of where they grew up in Dawson County. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mama, why do you always paint these little big country settings? She said, because I didn't ever want to have to live the hard life that they lived and it was a reminder to me to achieve, to accomplish, to move on, to continue, don't give up. Mm -hmm. My daddy something? did it too. Yeah. He, he painted pictures of the old home place mm -hmm. and I was like, I didn't even, they didn't tell you much. Yeah. They yeah. just kind of lived it before you. Well, and, Lydia, uh, wouldn't it be hard to talk about how hard it was? Because mm -hmm. Mother was a little bit bitter about it. She said, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have a prom dress. My friend um, whose daddy owned Jesse Jewel Chicken loaned her a prom dress because my grandparents had no money. They had no money. They, mm -hmm. they didn't have a little money. They had no money. Right. So it, it was very, very hard. Yes, and, it was. and to grow up in that, it either creates bitter or better. Yes. You know? That's right. It's, it's life. Yeah. You can choose to be bitter or better. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. back then, they had it so hard, and they had so many children right. to help with the farm and to help with other kids. Yeah, There was so much work to be done because nothing was handed to them. Uh -huh. well, they didn't have welfare. No. They no. had to get up and get it. If they, yeah. if they had it, they had to create it in mm -hmm. what little bit they had, seed or whatever. And I can remember some stories my aunt would tell me that, you know, they were given this land, and they had to work it this way to have a garden mm -hmm. and then build a home cut the trees down, everything from mm -hmm. scratch. So. And I bet they didn't have a chainsaw to cut no, the trees. No, <laughs> They had a two-man saw. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, a two-man saw. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, they came up very hard. But then it gives you the appreciation of where you came from that you don't take it for granted because we have been so, so blessed, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. blessed to have mm -hmm. them as our inheritance, you know, that right. we've come from them to remember because my parents definitely taught us the right way to preserve and mm -hmm. to protect and to, to pray over and to be thankful for everything that we had. Because mm -hmm. mom worked in the garden and she knew what it was to work on a farm. Daddy worked out in the whatever had to be done too and he was a steel worker so he put up buildings and then he rigged tents for revivals, mm -hmm. big huge tents. Mm -hmm. And he did it from nothing. Nothing. Just yeah. God given talent and just use the resources they had and they never wasted one thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if it went out in scraps, it was scraps. Yeah, <laughs> it was. No there was use nothing. For it. <laughs> there was nothing. Yeah. I mean, Mama was very frugal and she sent you to the store with a list and uh -huh. you better come back with that list. <laughs> and that, she had it to the penny on there because <laughs> uh -huh. she had to manage. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. did. Yeah. And today, I just, even today, I was thinking about how blessed we are that I don't have to get up and do what she did or they mm -hmm, did mm -hmm. in the, in the, to make a means of living mm -hmm. that God has given me the blessing to be able to have the freedom to come here today yeah, rather yeah. than a nine to five job, you know? Right. So right. But yeah, you can choose to be bitter or better. Yep. That's it. Well, today we know a lady who is watching us. Her name is Martha and she has a daughter <laughs> whose name is Angela. Angel. Angel. Okay. And, and she and Angel work together to spread the good news. Always. Always. Yes. To spread the oh good news. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They have such yeah. huge hearts. Yeah. My family, I just, I'm so blessed to be in this family, but my oldest sister, Martha, um, she used to live here in LJ, and so mm -hmm. I'd be at her house on the weekend and get to stay here uh, to come over to do your show when mm -hmm. Debbie was here. Mm -hmm. And I remember those great memories. Yeah, you know, yeah. I called it my uh, weekend getaway. Yeah, you're, you're going on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you had a yeah, vacation to Martha, with her. So. A she big had, shout out to well, her. And she had hip surgery recently. Yeah, a month ago. I don't know what y'all know about when your hip hurts, but when your hip hurts, it hurts. And when it gets fixed, it's better. So, yay. <laughs> and we hers just, is fixed. We hope you're doing good. And and y'all remember to share today's program with your friends and neighbors because once we come off the air, it will go to our YouTube channel and just type in Sherry Martin and spell it the right way, C-H-E-R-I-E, and you will get to share it with everybody. And we hope to spread good news because even though 
A lot of evil going on in the world today. There's so mm -hmm. much stuff that scares me to death. And and last night somebody was talking, we were talking about, um, you know, an example, a single mom working, paying too much for daycare, can't get food stamps, can't get any help, but then you get behind somebody that you know just came to the country and they have an EBT card loaded with $2,200. Now that, those are fighting words. <laughs> those are fighting words. And I was mm -hmm. thinking about that last night. Um, it's very strange to me, we're in a mess. We're mm -hmm. in a mess. Yeah. And if we don't get it cleaned out soon, it's gonna be too late because we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into a pit. We, yes. are, we are truly getting into a pit. Mm -hmm. And it's very sad because when you see the ones that are trying get taken down and you see those who don't deserve it lifted, it, it works with your mind. Yeah. Very hard, yeah. very And hard. we should support those single moms and Absolutely. widows, people yeah. who are struggling around us. It, it takes a community to raise somebody, it really mm -hmm. does. But mm -hmm. you know what, look around you. You can always help somebody. That's the way we were raised. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, Mom was always loading up that black <laughs> station mm -hmm. wagon, mm -hmm. Falcon station wagon, I mm -hmm. think it's a 60 model. We was always taking food to somebody yeah. Yeah. or going and taking them to somewhere and yeah. helping. Mm -hmm. That was our life. Because when we was raised in like Mineral Bluff, the people around there knew everybody, mm -hmm. and they helped each one. I mean, you could just, that's the way community was. Sure. Always sure. giving out of people's gardens and helping one another. Mm -hmm. You didn't see that. If they needed something helped, they, the men would be there on Saturday after they worked all week mm -hmm. to help them get that barn done or the, that house finished or whatever, and that's the way it should be, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And to see a single mom struggling, yeah, we should tough. reach out to them yeah. and help them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, when I realized what they pay for daycare, $165 a week. Sure. And then I watched a special about daycare and it showed that by the time they pay their insurance and they pay for their building and they pay for the groceries to feed the children while they're there and they pay their employees not great money, but decent money, there's no money left for the owner of the daycare. And I said, yeah. then why do you do this? Because $165 a week is more than I made most of my life a week. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. So we look at the world today, we need to straighten it out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's too late or not, but mm -hmm. we need to straighten it out. Because those moms that are working, going to college, taking care of their child, they shouldn't be penalized paying that. The government needs to step in and help them mm -hmm. not be giving those $10,000 cards to those people illegally coming into our country. Right. That's what drives me crazy. Yeah. And I was up all night long thinking, now how could I get an EBT card for $10,000? Well, I could go down there and I could learn Chinese before I cross the border. And then they'd probably give me a $20,000 card as I cross the border. But it's crazy. We are, we are, we're losing our battle within our, within our boundaries. We are not fighting for each other. And we are not fighting to attack the evil. We mm -hmm. are not, we're not doing what we need to do by stepping up and doing what your mama did. Helping your neighbor, helping your friends, helping people who've come into the community that you don't even know. Yeah, we're not subject to our surroundings. Our surroundings are subject to the Christ inside of us. Mm -hmm. So if we'll start getting on our knees, first of all, and ask God for direction, don't think he won't give it to you. He said, I'll give wisdom to you liberally if you just ask it. Mm -hmm. And so, and a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And how can he ask anything of God? Because God's like, I'll give it to you, but what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have to be good stewards of what we give us. Give to the poor. Lend to the poor. Jesus said when you do it, you, you lend to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So help people out around what, what's in your hands and your means. Give it to the ones that you see that are struggling because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I just love that ministry of helping those who are in need mm -hmm. because that's what I used to be. Mm -hmm. I used to be the one in need that was always needy because mm -hmm. I didn't know what I know now. Mm -hmm. But see, it takes time to get there. And so God helps us along the way. And I, I love our single moms and dads that struggle. Mm -hmm. We love to help them in our mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. that We have a ministry for that. And we honor them often. And you know, to see their faces when they're at a meal, sit down meal, mm -hmm, to know that mm -hmm. somebody cares for them, 
it just ministers to them in such a way that only God can do. But this mm -hmm. was his idea. Mm -hmm. It was the Lord's idea to start a widow's basket ministry that's gone over into the single moms and dads. Mm -hmm. And we reach out to them, always encouraging them. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. Church yeah. should be doing that because church is not just inside of four walls. Mm -hmm. It's in us to go out and do in the community. Right, right. I, I was thinking about when... Um, Gosh, I can remember being that single mom and renting a house for $80 a month, and I thought, I'll never be able to pay for this. $80 a month, can you imagine? And I was walking to one job, and, and then I would drive to the other job, and, and it was just crazy because I'm like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Well, I did it, but it took my babysitter, who was amazing. She charged everybody $15 a week, but she charged me 10 for Angela and five for Dawn. So I got two for $15 a week because she said, I know you're trying and I know yeah. you have no help. Yes. And I thought, Miss McIntyre, she met Jesus and he said, Pearl, have you got a bowl of them amazing <laughs> cream potatoes? Because she would sit in a circle with all the kids and feed them out of one bowl. Today she'd go to prison for 40 years for that. But she'd have a bowl of beans and a bowl of potatoes. She made mm. the best cream potatoes in the world. And and she just loved, she was so good. Mm -hmm. She was so good. And, mm -hmm. and I realized kindness, just full of kindness, you know. Mm -hmm. And those kids loved her. She made them mind. Yes. And they respected her. Mm -hmm. And I said, Miss McIntyre, I mean, I'd be home five minutes and Angela would be saying, let's go to McIntyre's, let's go to McIntyre's. I said, we just left McIntyre's. And she <laughs> said, love McIntyre. And uh -huh. I said, I know. Those yes. are the kind of people we mm -hmm. need to remember. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, man, yeah. because. Well, that was the attribute of Christ. Help me get through it, yeah. Kindness, that's one of the fruits yeah. of spirit. Love, kindness, peace, yep. joy, gentleness, yep. meekness. Yep. Well, last week I told you about something that happened to me, and this is this is my cup for last week. I will not be shaken. I was <laughs> shaken last week, and and one of the things that I wanted to share with you, the the gentleman that I was trying to help, I didn't know him from Adam's house cat till a few weeks ago, and somebody called me and said, "Will you help this guy?" And I said, "Okay, tell me his story." They tell me the story. I said, okay, I'll do it. So I get everything in place. I, I do what two attorneys said would be impossible. I did it. I pulled it off, got it ready. Everything's done. The good son, the evil son. The good son, the evil son. Okay. The evil son, we sit and wait three hours. He never shows up to sign the paperwork. House gets sold on the courthouse steps, and I'm crying my eyes out, and I'm falling apart, and I'm, I'm just like remembering what my daughter did, and I'm just having a nervous breakdown. The good son to this day, has still not said anything bad about his brother. I've said a few things bad about his brother, and Lord forgive me, but I've said some bad things, and I refer to him as the evil brother. He is the evil brother because he stopped. And, and this is, I'm calling the governor's wife today. I want to know what can we do to protect good from evil because had the probate stopped this sale, had reverse mortgage stopped this sale, the good son wouldn't have been pun punished because of the bad son. Now keep in mind, it's been six days since then. The good son still hadn't said anything bad about the evil son. I have plenty, <laughs> plenty. It wasn't fair, you know, and, and we look at life and it's not fair. It's not fair. So. Uh, $175,000 has gone away from that family forever. And the man who bought it, I offered him a, a generous profit. He wouldn't take it. Then he comes back now and he will take it. Well, my buyer walked away because my buyer said after what they put us through and all you did and you worked that hard for nothing, he said, no, I don't want to do it because he was doing it to benefit the family. Now it's going to benefit the buyer who's making $98,000. He was doing it just to help my family. He was doing it from his heart. And he said, I don't want to do it now. He was doing it to help save this home. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's hard to see evil win over good. It's hard. It's only for a season. I know. It's only I for a season. I keep telling myself that. This, this you keep man, praying for him. Yeah. That's what you, <laughs> have <to do. laughs> you have to pray for your enemies. It's called grace. I've never even met it's this man. It's called mercy. I've never we met have him. To do it. But I've been on the phone with him, <laughs> and he was supposed to show up, and he we would have handed him $85,000. Uh -huh. And he walked away. But he mm -hmm. walking away because the mother did what she did in the will, 
it split. The other son got nothing e either. And it's so sad to me. It's I such have, a story of Christ, though. I, oh. It really is. Well, I'm is sorry, that what Sherry. the lesson is? Is that the lesson? It is. Because it really is, because here's why. Until you release that person that's hurt you, mm -hmm. you're the only one that's affected by it. He's yeah. not worried about nothing. Oh, no. You are. And if you don't yeah. make it right, I'm not preaching to you. I'm saying, I know. in general, yeah. I've had to walk through yeah. this too. Yeah. We have to release that to God because that hurt becomes uh, unforgiveness. Then it becomes bitterness. Yeah. And a root of bitterness is hard to get out. Yeah. And so if you'll forgive him quick mm -hmm. and pray for him and then let God work on that. That's what his until, brother says. <laughs> until we, well, there you go. There's two witnesses. Let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And so if when we release it to God, then that frees us up and he can work on that individual. And here's the good news, that he can save him and he'll be your best friend down the road because he'll be like, what happened? Why did I do that? Yeah. Because yeah. he didn't know Christ. I'm not yeah. saying this he, man doesn't. He doesn't know. Well, doesn't. okay, then we're yeah, going to pray for his soul. Yeah, he does. So God can save him and turn this yeah. whole situation yeah. around. Yeah. And the good boy, the good guy, yeah. he's like Christ. He's dying to his flesh and he's praying. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. And that, that right there is the cross. Yeah. That yeah. is the cross. Yeah. It's called crucifying that flesh daily and picking up our cross. So we just pray for him. Yeah. And let God yeah. work it out because yeah. when we do the right thing, God will reward us. It, it may not happen immediately. It may not happen in our lifetime, but it will happen because well, of our obedience. At the courthouse, I, I begged them. We had given them the contract. They, the family was going to get the money. Everything was good. But the United States government, the HUD decision maker, said this is a cleaner split we'll do it this way and we don't have to wait until you probate the will as simple as that somebody sitting behind a desk chose to take it from the family and nothing we could do about it you know it just and it it was boy it was hard because it brought back those memories of, mm. of what happened to my child and i mm -hmm. was like you know well yeah yeah. I just gave you what to do. There you <laughs> that's go. The, that's the remedy. I have to forgive the <laughs> evil brother. I will. Oh, Lord. We pray for him, too. <laughs> I will. <laughs> oh, boy, this is going to be hard, Lydia. There's Maybe my that's why he today. sent me here today. That's right. There's my Sunday school There's good news. Today. It's good news. <laughs> it's all good news when you forget. Yeah. Well, honestly, when he said, it us up. He said yesterday, he said, well, there's even goodness in my brother. And I thought, what? <laughs> you know? So, so there's there's the testimony there is, for because today. Because that's why the yeah. enemy sold him so many lies to think that yeah. he has to be that way or that anybody has to be that way. I'm not talking about this man because I don't know him. Yeah. I'm just saying in general. Because the, the, the devil will send lies, and you start believing those lies, then you become corrupt. Mm -hmm. You become thinking that you, you, you can only do this as a thief. You don't have to live that way. Yeah. That's a lie of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. No, get the good news that you can live free from sin and live the prosperous life and watch what God does through you then. Yep. When there's a threat as what's really good inside somebody, mm -hmm. the enemy pounds that person to go this way because he knows there's such a great thing inside mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm waiting to come forth because God sent us here with that in us yeah. if we'll just open it up and say okay Lord here I am I want you as Lord and Savior take my life and turn it into what you want it to be like you because yep. you're holy that's it you're a holy God and then we can just forgive and and live a peaceful life because we all go through it <laughs> I'm going to forgive this man <laughs> all right Lydia's gotten through to me thank you for joining us today don't forget tomorrow Bill Senyard will be with us and he might do a song or two for y'all and uh, I can't wait to see Bill he and Melissa joined Cool Springs Baptist Church yesterday moved their letter there and uh, excited to see him in a community that I love I'll see y'all again soon tune into YouTube and share it with your friends bye y'all